All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, now we have a, a great guest for you guys, Wendell Potter. He uh, was a senior public relations officer at Humana and Cigna. They were two of the largest for-profit health insurance companies. He's now the author of the book, Deadly Spin. Uh, Wendell, welcome back to the Young Turks. Thanks for the opportunity. Glad to be back. All right. Uh, great to have you here. You have a fascinating story. Before we get into uh, this topic at hand about uh, how you dealt with the media, just can you give us a little background on what you did as a, as a PR officer at these health insurance companies? Yeah, I was, uh, I guess you called me the chief spin meister. I was a person who was responsible for trying to, as we said, enhance, protect and enhance uh, my company's reputation and also the industry's reputation. I was a person who uh, was on the phone with reporters when the reporter would call looking for information about the company or the industry, and I was uh, responsible for trying to, to make the industry and my companies look good. And were you always forthright with all of the facts uh, when you were in an effort to do that? You know, one of the tricks of uh, the, the PR profession, if you're not all that on the up and up, is to uh, make disclose, uh, selective dis disclosure of information. And I, uh, I'm afraid to say I was guilty of that. I don't think that I, I can re look back and say that I knowingly outright lied to a reporter unless you just consider selective disclosure to be uh, dishonest. And I now do, looking back on it, because you, so you, you disclose selective pieces of information to with one uh, purpose in mind, and that is to mislead often or to make people believe something that is not necessarily entirely true. And that goes on all the time, not just in the insurance industry, but uh, throughout corporate America and I'm sure elsewhere. But it's something that I'm not proud of. Uh, the other thing that I did when I was in the industry is help uh, my colleagues uh, in other companies uh, and the industry in general to uh, get ready for a health care reform debate and to try to shape health care reform as I did uh, during the Clinton years and, and years later, and, and even the beginning of this most recent health care reform debate. We uh, are pretty crafty when it comes to developing PR strategies to influence public opinion and assist to turn public opinion away from the real reform that people need. So that brings up a couple of things. First, let, let me ask you about selective disclosure a little bit more. You know, I, I don't know if it, you have off the you know, top of your head a, a good example of it, but, you know, It'd be great to have an example so that people know what you mean. Like you disclose certain facts but not others. How does that lead to misleading the public? Well, here's an example. Uh, the, the newest health plans, the newest kind of health plans that the insurance companies want us to be in are high deductible plans, the ones that make us pay a lot more money out of our own pockets before they'll pay anything for our care, even if we are insured and paying our premiums every month on time. Uh, by uh, moving us into what they call consumer-directed plans, uh, that means that we have to pay often three, four, five, sometimes up to $30,000 out of our own pockets uh, before they'll pay anything in these high deductible plans. They, uh, what I was doing when I was in the industry is trying to promote these plans as a real solution to uh, uh, our health care reform, uh, to, uh, excuse me, to our, the problem of so many people without insurance. What it has led to is a growing number of people, not only who have no insurance, but a rapidly growing number of people who are underinsured. They have coverage, they're paying for it, but it's not worth what they're paying, and they are finding out when they go to the doctor or uh, or need a, need surgery or something that they just can't afford it. That's why so many Americans are now not going to get the care they need. They're not even picking up their medicines that doctors prescribe because they just can't afford it. They're in these kinds of plans. When I was in the industry and what the, my, my former colleagues are still doing is trying to make us all think that these are a good way to, this is a good way to go for this country. And they are, uh, they're putting out, uh, surveys that selectively disclose some of the findings but not all of the findings that uh, for, you know for the full intent of trying to uh, uh, make people think the way they want them to think so on a plan like that where the company is actually making a ton of money and, and doesn't have a lot of outlay so they like that plan because they're getting in more from their clients and they're paying out uh, yeah. they only tell the side of the story where they that benefits them so the, the, the yeah. good parts but they That's leave right. out the and, bad parts and they leave out yeah. the fact that they make more money off you Exactly, and if you look at uh, the, and I do this because I used to do it for a living when I worked there, uh, I look at the earnings reports that these companies uh, file with the SEC every three months, and this year they on, they're on track to make record profits. I've never seen anything quite like it, and I used to handle financial communications for 10 years. They're making money uh, that is blowing away what Wall Street thought they would make. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, they're doing this during a time when we're still you know, trying to get out of a recession, when more and more people are unemployed and an increasing number of people are un- uninsured um, and more and more people are underinsured. They're making a ton of money, more than they've ever made before, uh, and it's because they're making us... Um, move into these plans in which they don't have to pay very much. We're, we're talking to Wendell Potter. He was one of the most senior PR people in the entire industry at the time. His new book is Deadly Spin. So you said there that uh, during your tenure, you, you know, while working in these companies, said that you guys were for health care reform. Now, was that true in any sense? Uh, or were you internally talking like, hey, we got to put a good face on it, and so let's say we're for health care reform? But in reality, of course, the only thing we care about is our bottom line. Well, it's, it's some of both, and I'll explain. Uh, whatever they said, at the end of the day, what they're really interested in is, is having something that helps them either preserve their profits or to enhance their profits. So um, they actually were in favor of, uh, of certain elements of the reform legislation that was actually was passed, in fact, quite a bit of it. The most important thing that they liked is, uh, is ironically, what a Virginia judge uh, has said, in his opinion, is unconstitutional, and that's a provision that requires all of us to buy their products. Um, the other thing the insurance industry wanted was to strip out the so-called public option, and they got that done, but they also were able to keep in the bill this individual mandate, this requirement that by 2014, all of us, if, we, if we're not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid or the VA plan or something like that, one of the, one of the existing public plans, that we'll have to buy their products. Uh, and that's why they wanted reform. They wanted this in there because it gives them a whole new revenue stream. They'll be getting billions of dollars in new revenue because we'll be required to buy their products, and if we can't afford their premiums, the government will subsidize those premiums for us. So they love that, and the reason they, not only why they like that is because they know that their business models right now are just not sustainable for the long haul. You can't keep shifting the, the cost of care from them to us and and expect that people are going to be able to continue to afford their products it just you can't sustain it indefinitely shocking that they like the part of the reform that uh, mandates that people buy from them and killed off the part of the reform which would have created competition for them it, right, weird exactly. how that works out now, that was yeah that was job 1 and job 2 and they got them both of course they did uh, they always win so Wendell you know I mean, this is a real question and and I don't know the answer to this in in the internal deliberations when you guys were you know discussing what should be the policy and how to defend that policy, of course, uh, as in your role as PR. Was there ever a conversation about, hey, you know what, this will make us more money, but it's just not right, right? I mean, nine people care their lives. Was there ever a decision made based on, it, it just isn't right, or taking, you know, health or morality into account? Not in, not in any meetings that I was a part of. What happens is that, and I'll speak for myself, my own personal experience, in the meetings that I was in, I never heard anything like that. Uh, I, you know, I frankly thought there might be a chance that I could work from the inside and try to, you know, persuade uh, my colleagues in the industry to see things from a different perspective, to do the right thing. But the reality is that Wall Street won't let them. It's, it's, it's the pressure from Wall Street uh, for these companies to make more and more money every year. And uh, uh, being consumer-friendly is at odds with that. Doing the right thing for most Americans is, is at odds with that. A lot of people still cling to the notion that the free market system uh, or market-based solutions, as the industry will try to make us uh, think that what, you know, what they're proposing is best, people think that, that it will work in the healthcare system like it does maybe in some other parts of the economy. It simply does not because in healthcare and health insurance, you're, you're dealing with people's lives. And to be able to meet Wall Street's expectations, they have to do things that result in people dying, quite frankly, uh, uh, cutting people off from their insurance when they get sick or, or refusing to sell people uh, coverage if they have a pre-existing condition. You can't buy it at any price in our country if, you are, if you've got a pre-existing condition or certain pre-existing conditions. So, um, the, the the reality is that at the executive level, uh, they take their marching or marching orders from Wall Street and Wall Street alone. Is that why the name of the book is Deadly Spin? It is, and I explain in the book uh, how it how it happens uh, and what happens. I pull the the curtain back, but you're exactly right. I, I say in the very first of the book that forty five thousand people die in the United States of America every year because they don't have health insurance and many of them can't buy it at any price. 
in our crazy system. And I have to, you know, I admit up front that I, um, I, I was at least partially responsible for that because of all the years I was in the industry um, uh, making people believe something that really wasn't reality. All right, now let's go to another part of the book. Uh, the, you know, Raw story covered this. You had an interview with them, and, it, and it's fascinating. Uh, about how you wind and dined the media and and what effect did that had um, t tell us how you you know got the favorable coverage th through this just walk us through it a little bit yeah it's it's uh, it's nuanced it's uh, uh, and, and one of my responsibilities I used to be a reporter when I was uh, in my first career and I know you know how what their jobs are like what reporters jobs are like and the pressures are under so I could empathize with them legitimately I set out to make sure that I had a good relationship with reporters who covered my company and the industry uh, I would take them out to lunch and dinner and I, I would uh, make a point of trying to meet them personally so that I wouldn't just be a disembodied uh, you know voice on the other end of a telephone line I wanted them to like me to trust me and that was a big part of what I did every day was to develop good relationships with reporters because I knew that there would be times that they would be doing stories about Cigna or about Humana or about the industry uh, that I might not like. And I would want to make sure that my talking points were included in their stories. Or sometimes I, I was successful in killing stories because I was able to persuade them that their, what they were working on uh, didn't have much merit. Um, so it's it's something that you can develop over time, these relationships, and, and, and it's very important to do that. Uh, reporters will uh, often re, uh, recoil at that, thinking that they're not uh, susceptible to that kind of influence, but they absolutely are. I've seen it, and I see it I, so I, almost every day when I was in my job. So let's break that down a little bit. I mean, you would literally take them out to lunch and pay for their lunch. Now, what percentage of them, and I know these are rough, uh, would accept that, and and what percentage of the problem is that in terms of like are they giving you favorable coverage because you bought them a nice steak at lunch or or no and i suspect it's a little bit more nuanced than that that's why i wanted to hear from you it is more nuanced than that and there you know there are some reporters and i think i, I applaud them for it when i would even we would go out to lunch they would insist on picking up the tab or at least uh... splitting the tab uh, and I think that's a good gesture. I, I think that's exactly what they should do. But it doesn't really, when you get right down to it, matter who pays for it. The, the point is getting them at lunch in the first place because you can have conversations over a meal uh, that uh, is quite different from one that you can have just uh, by telephone or via email. And it is that process, that 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 very that very um, aspect of what I'm talking about, that lets you develop personal relationships with these reporters, so that they like you and that they trust you, uh, and they're going to be more likely to give you the benefit of the doubt if they're working on a story that involves you, or at least give you the opportunity to uh, be a part of the story, get your talking points in there, as I said, or your comments, and uh, and often, uh, uh, you know, I, I've. Over the over the years, have have been successful in killing stories. So it, they feel like, hey, it's not just a machine. I'm talking to Wendell, and Wendell wouldn't lie to me, and and Bob yeah. wouldn't lie to me, and Susan wouldn't lie to me. I had lunch with them last week. They're good guys, right? That's right. Yeah, they're they're good guys, and uh, uh, they shoot straight with me, and I've never known them to outright lie to me. And that's that's part of the the nuance as well, too. I I, I never, uh, like I said earlier, knowingly lied to them, uh, and I know that if uh, and not just from being the good guy that I am, because I knew that if I did lie and they found out about it, that would be the end of the relationship, or they would never trust me again. So it's it's really quite a, an interesting uh, dance, but a very important one for PR executives. Right, and that goes back to the idea of selective disclosure. You didn't lie; you just told them the facts that are totally on your side and buried the facts that weren't. Right? That's exactly right. That's and the way so, the game is played. You know, I, I you know outside of healthcare reform, I think this uh, you know topic is incredibly important for all the different issues because yes. it seems to me that you know and, and we knew this before but your evidence on this is it you know is really helpful that the media in a sense are, are just too gullible they they think uh, well oh okay if the official person at the pentagon or the official person at cigna or or whoever says it well i mean they're not going to lie to me right so i should just write it down as if it's true you know it's true and the media you know they they're just like the rest of uh, folks so um, and, and and I'll I'll put myself in that category too. We often are susceptible to uh, to being manipulated. Our, our thoughts and actions are manipulated every day. And that was one of the reasons I wrote this book was to uh, to, to explain how it's done, uh, so that people can can realize why they do the things they do and why they think the way they think, and, and why that they 
and most of us at one time or another vote against our own self-interest. Uh, and we saw that most most clearly, in my view, in the midterm election, midterm elections we had last last last, last month, uh, we saw people who were just uh, really persuaded that the health care reform bill represented the government take over the health care system. It simply was not. But they heard it enough, and they heard it, uh, you know, uh, from people that they trust and believe that there are people who would level with them. But they got sold something that was just not true. Wendell, so that's the final question. And we're talking to Wendell Potter. He was uh, one of the most senior PR people in the healthcare industry, worked at Humana and Cigna. And his book is The Deadly Spin. Um, so as you look at healthcare reform, final package, uh, the people that are in favor of it, uh, the Obama administration, et cetera, will say, look, it's a good start and we'll build on it and, and it got the job done. Historic health care reform, et cetera. Uh, are you in that camp or, or do you think, no, the companies got actually kind of what they wanted and it's not really, it's not going in the right direction? And I'm curious, you know, I, I don't it, really know which, which, which side. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's, it's, it's what, is, what we typically get out of uh, our political process. It's, it's something that is a compromise. And I think that the industry, the insurance industry, definitely got what it wanted or a lot of what it wanted. There are lots of things in there it, it, that the industry does not like. There are a lot of consumer protections in this bill. Uh, this bill makes illegal a lot of the practices they've been engaging in for many years that should have been outlawed a long time ago. They don't like that. So that's good for consumers, and it brings a lot of people into coverage that wouldn't have had coverage before. That's a very good thing. So it's it is. It was worth passing, and it is a start. But that's what I say. It is. It's. It's the beginning of a long process. We've just. We're. As someone said, I think we're at the end of the beginning. <laughs> so you certainly would have gone in a direction where you at least provided an option that was not just private insurance. Oh, absolutely. I. I said. Um, many times that uh, the public option was an important part of the bill. I even said, uh, you know, before in testimony that if they passed it without it, uh, it would be a, 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 might as well call it the Health Insurance Industry Profit Protection and Enhancement Act. And in many ways it does just that, but it also does a lot of good things. And um, to your point earlier, just briefly, you, you're right. This is not just health care. I used to be in PR for, uh, and I used to do PR for other industries. And uh, uh, this is this is across the board. This is how corporate America gets stuff done. It's how they make us think, and it's how they get public policy enacted the way they like it. So it's not just health care, and people need to understand it. Right, and they need to understand that corporate America, understandably, is motivated by the bottom line. So if yep. they send out a PR person to talk to a reporter, he's not a good guy trying to give you impartial, neutral information. Doesn't mean right. he's not a good person. He's just doing yep. his job, passing he's along information that's only helpful to that corporate interest. Exactly. We can continue to have this system, but we just need to be aware of how it's done and, and, uh, and the harm that it can do if we're not uh, uh, up to speed. All right. Wendell Potter, the book is Deadly Spin. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.